And we're back. Oh my goodness. So I'm looking at the screen, and I was just thinking about, like, it... I'm just thinking about the movie, uh... Nope. Where just something horrible happens, and then they just, like, they just... They just cool down at the pancake house. Like, they're just like we're just gonna hang, we're just gonna hang out at the pancake house. We're not gonna go home. <laughs> this is where we are now. Because like the last line in here is like, okay, agent, urgent, urgent care for him. Then the pancake house. <laughs> like we, we just need to escape. It reminds me of um like a shot of the dead. Where it's like, okay, we're gonna go to the bar and wait for this all to settle down. And it's like, is it though? <laughs> <laughs> and dogs can look up. I don't. I never understood that. I Dogs still, can look up. Still, Why did he think they couldn't look up? I don't understand. Ooh, that's spooky. I want to do that again. That was spooky. This doesn't usually happen on these screens. Why is radio adjustment always creepy? Uh, it's just a weird sound and it gives hints of like communication because you're like jumping between communication ca communication channels So like you'll hear Potentially intelligible stuff and not be quite be catching it and it's just I don't know It's just it's I mean, it's uncanny because it's like in between communication and not and you feel powerless because yeah. it's not as if you can like you're able to To discern what it's saying, you know, like it cannot help you. Yeah, and it's also like its own version of like TV where like Static's Back in the day, too. we used to have static on TVs. And, uh, remember, uh, there wasn't a signal. This is the end of our broadcast day. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking. That still creeps me out because of Poltergeist. But like TVs, like TVs this and radio are all about about clearly broadcasting this thing. So when it just shuts down and gives you noise instead, like that's just kind of a strange, uncanny experience. You can move. You can work that into horror. I know. Uncanny is like... But only as long as people remember what snow was like on their TVs. Once once that's no longer a cultural touchstone, because everyone's TV just has like a blank video output and then turns off or whatever if it can't get a signal, then you can't scare kids yeah, the same the, way the with the static. Yeah, the ring is not as effective as it used to be. VHS tapes and no. staticky TVs used to fucking kill me because like, i watched that movie when i was very little yeah i was in the second grade when that movie came out and you bet i fucking went and saw it and i should not have seen it i thought about it for <laughs> weeks oh man that movie fucked me up and i was and i was like three or four years older when it came out well like, it came out 2000 okay so i think, I, it, I think I, it might be 1998 was, or 9 that was like 2001 Straight to IMTB, one second into the video. Let's go! I'm so sorry, guys. We're so good at videos, but the, uh... No, I'm not talking about the original. I think one of the last... It's, it's 20... Okay, so it's 2002. Ah, so I was 12. Okay. And you were, like, 9? Ye yes. Yeah, I was 9. So I guess I wasn't in second grade. Being born in but... 1990 makes age math very easy. Almost as easy as being born in the year 2000, I guess. <laughs> where it's just the current year is your age. That <laughs> I just add 10 directly. Well, aren't you lucky? Ooh. Mm -hmm. What a massive... Uh, this is my this is my privilege. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get out of here with your age privilege. My age privilege? Where I die sooner. <laughs> everyone, yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Get out while you can. Sure is nice being older than everyone in this house and the audience. Here I go. <laughs> the uh, I think one of the last sources of, like static in culture might be like the hbo intro where it starts oh, yeah, where static like, and it fades and it fades into hbo from the noise and even that in the modern era is is like even ignoring the idea of people not understanding what the static's even from anymore uh it's getting more to be more and more of a bad idea because you can't show static on a streaming service really because if you do, it all gets fucking crunched. It gets obliterated by the bitrate. Like the bit, like it doesn't render correctly. You can't actually show. Like it's a. I learned this really quickly because we would do like a. Like videos on like the original Five Nights at Freddy's, and that, that game had a full screen like static effect on it. Like there was noise yeah, constantly, yeah. and the visual noise just destroys the appearance of the game because yeah, all of that noise has to be rendered, which where it's like usually like a dark game. Is actually really low, like the recording would be a really small file size because of the fact that 
most of the screen's mostly black ish and there's not much not data a changing. Contrast. Like the only way to get to use up less data than a dark game is just to record a visual novel like this where it's just a single image sitting there statically most of the time. So there's almost no visual data. Uh by definition, static like white noise visuals are the most data busy you could possibly have. It is the most intensive data you could have because every single part of the screen is changing basically every frame just just for no reason. Like so like it literally uses more data than like a rotating camera would where you like pan and the whole screen's like sliding or whatever. Like the entire screen's literally just, just being a dick and just spamming changing the, <laughs> the, the the channels as fast as possible. Yeah, thanks HBO Max. Why are you doing that then? Well, so what so what but what happens is it doesn't make you use a ton of data streaming it. What instead happens is that when you try to then render it at a at a given bit rate so it can be streamed it just delete. It just obliterates that part of the video. Like it just looks like shit. Like the <laughs> static effect is just it does not come across correctly, and you'll see like chunks of it are all fucked up everywhere. If you ever look at that on a streaming service, it never looks the way it would back. Uh, like if you bought a, a Blu-ray of a of a HBO show or something, like you can compare and contrast, and it's a huge difference. But you can only compare and contrast yourself because you can't stream a comparison because that would be streamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this trippy (laughs) technology bit rates i think about them a lot i don't think about them because i try not to i don't know a lot about them so this first line immediately (laughs) hits us with how fucked up last time was where brian just dropped all pretense real fast yeah like last time he was like i'm just i'm just gonna hurt you in ways that that uh or most that duke's not gonna see yeah exactly like but this time around he's like i got a whole room of people let's just fucking go he's not afraid to get in trouble this time yeah this time he was apparently just too excited about that so he was just like this is such an i'll never have this opportunity again fuck duke and he just went which like there was hints that that would happen because we quickly realized last time that brian is not just Duke's lackey. Like, he's obeying Duke, seemingly because they have a shared incentive to figure out the thing that Duke's trying to do, but, like, Brian will also just kidnap Chase and take him to his murder mine. Like, that's yeah, just the thing got he'll own, do. he's got his own horrible yeah, volition. Which Duke doesn't seem entirely uh, prepared for, either. Something I have thought about a lot in the ensuing couple weeks since last time is that, like... So... <laughs> The guy who reacts poorly to being called gay, even though he's very obviously gay, and he takes out all of his frustrations on gay people, and that's his whole thing, uh, and he's a, he's a he's an anti-gay serial killer, was killed by a monster in his closet. <laughs> 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 like, they literally, in case you didn't get it, Literally, like Micah literally says, like he 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 refers specifically to the thing being from the closet afterwards. I'm pretty sure I I checked afterwards to just be sure. There's probably too much fucking talking to ever find the the correct line on the fly. But like, it's like during the line where he's just like, "Did you get like so he that we all saw that right? That's real or whatever." Like he even specifically references the closet, and I'm like, "I'm not. It's just too much. It's it's too much." I only got into the part where they see the red outside. It's not worth it, but but it's, I swear. <laughs> I believe like, you. I believe. Well, I think I, I I remember that coming. I just I didn't put that connection together at all because I just was I was just like oh yeah that's Jenna's thing her her Jenna's is Jenna's stand. It's yeah, it's just, I, I find this stuff interesting. How often this seems the stuff always seems intentional and like constructing stuff in that way where you're subtly reinforcing themes is always just interesting. And I'm like writing's writing's really hard, and I don't know how people do it. <laughs> don't know how it happens yeah no yeah i i cannot even fathom no i can still feel the stitches in my leg even though i pulled out the little bits of of line a half hour ago yeah you know you're gonna feel that for a few days bro that's uh, that's horrible that's uh, a horrible like i hated uh, that <laughs> it wasn't even a skin thing it, it was, was like muscle it was, it was deep, in the muscle yeah, was, i hate that's the part uh, i hated he needs antiseptic just everywhere everywhere they need to, they need to just clean him out Despite living here a vast majority of my life, even I had trouble figuring out where the hell we were. As I walk, and the stinging throbs with every step, I close my eyes and realize how exhausted I really am. Running off extreme adrenaline for a day will take the wind out of you. So will multiple blows to the head, and torture, apparently. I keep imagining that 
uh, that when I open my eyes, I'll be back in my dorm. I'll sit up from bed, and Vincent will be tapping away at his laptop on the other side of the room. I'll tell him I had a fucked up dream, and he'll tell me about that too cool for school tone. He'll tell me in that too cool for school tone to blog about it. <laughs> it's so outdated. <laughs> Rhythmic tapping was at first really annoying, but it's kind of like a white noise machine. I, I think they mean like Tumblr when they say blog about it. I don't know, but does anyone even refer to that? I mean, it, are blogs a thing? You definitely blog on Tumblr. Like, that's the idea of it, is that it's a blog, essentially. Like, you, like the, the retweet button is a reblog button. Like, it's all built into that. And I just don't think people think of it in the same way. Where it's like, back in the day, people would just like basically write like a, a, a diary like in paragraphs, and like they would have yeah. like a long-form blog. When now it's like you, you post things, and it's technically like a blog, because it is like about your life, and it is like... But you don't really think of it in the same way. Like people used to like write blogs for, for like money. Live and stuff. journal. I just remember in Sims, you could you could be a person in Sims who makes money off their blog, and I'm like, yeah. I remember being a kid and be like, what? How does that work? <laughs> well, because yeah, blog varies wildly because there, there are just personal blogs. Like there are the diary type ones, which is someone's personal live journal thing. There's Tumblr stuff where it's kind of interactive discourse blog things, or your own personal like Pinterest blog that you have on Tumblr or Pinterest, <laughs> like that like style thing. But then there's like yeah, like, those food bloggers are, like, people that have, like, some kind of website that they're updating continuously that has enough of a following that, like, they in some way profit off of that audience, uh, like, the way a film reviewer would, essentially. But, but, those... but I don't know. I, I guess so. I just think of that as writing, like, like an essay or an article or something. It, it feels yeah. different to me than, like, a blog. Maybe I'm just, I think of it in a different way. The line gets really blurry between it. like a news blog versus an actual news site versus like a obnoxiously pro, uh, influencer-y like news, like Twitter account or something. I just think of like, I think of like, like, uh, like, er, like, you know, early 2000s, like MySpace era, like striped hot topic armbands like sad girl e emo 666 like writing My little her, kitty. I'm, this is a poem i wrote today i went outside and i did this blah 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 like them writing a blog that's just like my life sucks. Blah 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 blah. Today's blah. song is. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about this thing. Blah 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 blah. And people I used like a bunch of ASCII characters to make a wobbly line. And yeah. A flower. <laughs> I don't. Know. This is my interpretation <laughs> of what I thought a blog was. So. It helps me sleep for some weird reason. Maybe because it makes me feel like I'm not so alone. Chase. I inhale sharply, nearly tripping over a clump of weeds. Jenna places a precautionary arm out in front of me before easing back when she sees I've got my balance again. You still with us? She looks me up and down, as if looking for signs that I'm turning into another Leo situation. Said wolf is still with us, ambling along like he can't feel the, that half his leg was stitched to mine less than an hour ago. I look back to him, to her, nodding. Yeah. Exhausted, but that's to be expected, I guess. Hmm. Ordinarily, I'd love a quiet walk with you at night, though, considering the circumstances. She pauses, looking over her shoulder. Well, it could be worse. You had a guardian angel. She noticeably stiffens as I bring up the topic of what just happened. I'm trying not to think about it. None of us had gone around to check out where Brian was dragged. In fact, we made a beeline in the opposite direction. Yeah. Let's, or, do, yeah. Yeah. Let's go check out the horrible monster. <laughs> Think it's a hugger? Uh, ordinarily, the lights of the town would guide us where to go, but everything's dark. The moon, our only real source of light. And even that is partially obscured. The productive thing to do is just think ahead right now. We'll come into town along the back roads, get to the motel, and take your car. I give her an affirmative thumbs up. Micah, meanwhile, is clutching his knife tight. It reminds me of how he, how he was with the wrench earlier, when he was worried about Leo attacking him. Now the two walk nearly side by side. Everyone but Leo is rattled, that's for sure. I can't tell if it's the supposed hysteria's fault, or just... A completely rational reaction to all the shit that's happened today. 
Micah's usually arrogant and gruff demeanor is replaced by a more timid posture, the bat rubbing his neck like he can't believe he's alive. I try to think of something to say as he turns his face to me. Micah, uh... I'm sorry about Keith. Yeah, I'm so sorry about Keith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He responds simply, sucking in his lower lip for a moment before one of his fangs, between one of his fangs before speaking again. Still not sure exactly what happened, but now I have more of a more, have a more definitive idea. He looks ahead again, shifting the topic. I had a dream about you, you know. Oh. After we spoke. I only got a little bit of sleep, but what I did dream stuck out to me. You were holding me underwater, drowning me. A cold chill creeps along my spine. Jenna looks over, raising her brow curiously at the bat. Leo stares straight ahead, unfazed. That's... weird? Why are you telling me this? Micah waves his hand, dismissing my question as he continues. You were holding me underwater, and it was fucking terrifying, because I couldn't breathe. Your hands around my throat felt exactly like that noose did. The way they bristled and cut into my neck. He points to matted fur around his throat, the pinkish, raw-rubbed flesh visible even in the dark. But, talking emotionally and shit, I started feeling... thankful? Thankful that I was killing you? That's rather macabre. The bat nods, seemingly well aware of how strange this sounds. Yet, he doesn't relent, noting how exceptionally strange everything else has been lately. I'd be willing to take anything at face value at this point. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like you were freeing me. Real fucked up suicidal shit. When I was up in that noose, though, I didn't want to die, so that part didn't translate. Honestly surprised I didn't piss and shit myself. <laughs> did, did you guys? <laughs> that sounds like he's like, he, like, it sounds like he did, and he's like, like, oh, d did anyone else, like, piss and shit themselves? Like, right? <laughs> like, we all did, right? Like <laughs> Right, right, everybody experienced this horrible, uh... Jenna stares blankly at him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, no. Leo, of course, is silent. Because he did. To think I almost left town a couple days ago would have never gotten caught up in this mess. Well, why did you really disappear the first time? Back in 2008? Micah fiddles with something in his pocket, taking it out and peering it over. I can't quite make out what it is. Something plastic and thick. Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of reasons. My folks turned on me after finding about some, finding out about some shit one night. Came home to find my room torn up, all my belongings outside. My mom, the cunt, wouldn't stop fucking bawling, screeched like a dying chicken at me. My dad, meanwhile, had his old police baton, kept coming at me with it whenever I tried to come inside. Kept screaming to. Let me in, and apologizing for every little screw-up I could think of. None of it worked. I tried to sleep on the porch, but Dad came out and started kicking me in the back till I left. God damn. Jeez. Jenna grimaces. That's awful. Leo looks back over his shoulder, slowing his pace some to match ours. I can tell he's at least half listening now, no longer as spaced out. Keith was gone, and uh, I didn't have anywhere else to go. Wasn't too popular, as I recall, even with Heather, Clint, and Jeremy. They had their own problems. Should have told me. The words catch Micah by surprise, the wolf staring at him across from the shrubbery. Mm. From across the shrubbery. Hey, I know we just started we just survived a near death experience together, but no need to be getting all retroactively sappy. We turn a small bend around a sandy embankment, some old car parts scattered in the underbrush. The moon is finally visible from behind Echo Canyon, and I can make out what Mike is carrying. Brian's cell phone. No. I guess he's going to try to take that as evidence. 
As he moves to push it back in his pocket, it slips and clatters against a rock beneath him. Ugh, fuck. I'll get it. Leo bends down, taking hold of the phone. The screen is shattered and a few slivers of glass fall to the ground. Damn it. The bat extends it out his hand. Thanks. Leo doesn't budge, still staring at the shattered device. Then, from beyond the desert scrub and, sh and scattered car parts, a, a mechanical roar. Uh-oh. Light flashes before us, and Leo holds up his paw to shield himself from the light. It takes me just a moment to realize their headlights, and the roar is the start of an old engine. It's a van, sitting right in front of us. Oh no! And it's all too familiar. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. got a CG. What the? This angle only raises new questions about exactly where Micah's wings that's are. That's what I was just. I, that, that, that's why it took me a second to, to say his line because I was like looking at his I'm, arms. I'm still trying to process because this, this is our one time to see Micah from behind. There's two reveals. Micah's wings are weird, and I still can't tell how how they where they go. And also, I don't think he has a tail. I mean, yeah. I mean, bats kind don't. Really they got, have they the got tail. little nubs. They have little nubs, but you, yeah. you have little have, little, it, little shorts. It's, like, it's such a little booty shorts. He's no, got he, on. no, he straight up has booty shorts on. Like, straight up, like er, almost everyone wears shorts in this game, but you can see the bottoms of Micah's shorts in the frame during gameplay. So his, like that's how that's how short they are. His his cheeks are above the text bar, text yeah. box. He, he, <laughs> his cheeks rest upon the text box. The bat's caked. He's, yeah. he's, he, <laughs> I feel like a Chase is the most like stereotypically like just a normal guy dressed. Like I've I've seen Chase's outfit on like <laughs> a, a million times. Uh, yeah. I basically own Jenna's outfit. <laughs> they're they're so close to having Chase be dressed as that one stereotypical guy that has the cargo shorts and the Zelda shirt, the green shirt with Triforce on it. Oh, my ex boyfriend. <laughs> like he's he's, <laughs> he's he's almost there. He's got the car. He looks like he has cargo shorts or khakis or whatever. The, uh, I was so I was I guess they're just they're getting weird fast and also maybe didn't want to break up the tension or the pacing but uh, they've really consistently started every day for a while with some kind of like vision of something so I was a little surprised that today just started well we here just we went, are we just went straight to Sunday without a thing but maybe that only happens when Chase sleeps I mean it seems to be like the I'm trying to remember was was the was the scene with this van taking a life, was that... That was Chase's dream, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess if he hasn't gone to sleep, then that wouldn't make sense anymore. Now, Chase's dreams are, like, a good excuse for, like, um... For mysterious exposition. Yeah, but we have things to unpack, because, like, we have... There's reason to wonder why we're setting up the idea of Micah dreaming about Chase drowning him. Well, and I'll, and I liked how Leo responded so quickly about like, hey, you should have told me you needed help because we have that whole thing about like what Micah and Leo's relationship is. Yeah, and it's him suggesting it more. It's suggesting that they know each other more than than they have outwardly said to us. And it makes you wonder if that would have worked or not. Like if that would have been a good or bad outcome. Like if my maybe if Micah was in, I mean, if Micah was in Leo's life, Leo might have had different focuses and not been what he's been for the last few years and might have been good for Micah to not be on the run or figuring out what to do for all that time. I mean, Leo's perfect, Keith. I don't know what what you think could have he could have been better, <laughs> you know, with Micah. Like, Dude I don't know what you're talking about. still wearing that bracelet. Yeah, and of course he is. But, yeah. um, I think Micah was definitely thrown out for something with Keith, like his a relationship with Keith maybe, or something. I'm assuming it has something to do with him being gay, perhaps. I thought it was drugs. Or that, yeah. It's really sad yeah. that those could be equal things to get no, yeah, it's in trouble up. with your parents for. They're b yeah, one of them is a reason to get tr in trouble with your parents and the other one's not, but neither of them are worth kicking somebody no, out no, for. No, 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 no. Because th th that's just... I think I think both of them require like a parent to be supportive. No. Yeah, it's just underage drugs are not a good surprise. <laughs> uh... Or, or, I mean, overage drugs are a bad surprise, too. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the drugs. Depends on the drugs, and yeah. In your choices and whatnot, but... Surprise drugs in your house as a parent, like like this is a it re it recontextualizes the situation heavily. But we uh we think Keith got 
kicked out for being gay. Be, at some point, it's like almost repetitive to keep doing that to every character. Well, I don't, who we don't, here we is not, not gay? <laughs> and it seems like Micah was a drug dealer this whole time. Uh, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what, what would have happened differently if Micah didn't skip town. That would have, might have significantly changed Leo's, Leo's entire path. situation. Hell, they, they, they were hooking up before... Uh, before Leo and Chase were even dating, they got history. But, but I also think that it could have just been that, and it yeah. might not have been a good thing for either of them. It might have been like an equally toxic situation. I don't think anything has been good for either of them, so <laughs> it's if, a matter of degrees, if really. If Micah doesn't tell Leo that he needs help in a situation like that, I don't think they have the kind of relationship that would be a dating yeah. relationship. Like, almost every option's bad. Like, I think about how, like, Chase and Leo are bad for each other, but also Leo probably saved Chase's life just by happening to be there. <laughs> I mean, he saved his life... Uh, well, maybe not in this route. <laughs> he's, he's, he's saved, he has saved his life in certain situations in this yeah, game. Yeah, no, I meant saved his life as in uh, because Chase was, on was like, on a path oh, to encounter Brian. Yes, 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 yes. That is fun to think about. And also not fun to think about. Yeah. Jenna reels back, eyes wired. That wasn't there a moment ago. She mutters, craning her neck some to peer through the red-tinted window to see who's behind the wheel. Dude, don't walk up to a van with the red lights on inside. Don't, like, red light, bad, bad. Yeah, bad red sign. light. <laughs> yeah, red light means stop. After a moment of inspection, it's clear there's no one inside. Jenna. What? Jenna, this is the van from the dream. The one I told you about? Oh, come on. Jenna doesn't sound incredulous to my claim, just exhausted. She crosses her arms tightly over her chest, not letting her eyes leave sight of the idling vehicle. Okay, then. What's it doing here? I don't have an answer for her, and therefore remain silent, stepping away from the front of the vehicle in case it somehow takes off. Well, I know two people who are much more familiar with this vehicle. Right yeah. here. Oh, yeah, I wonder who. Micah, meanwhile, looks confused. He peers around, his yellow eyes bright and shimmering in the focus of the headlights. What the fuck? I know where we are, but we were headed into town towards the motel. How the fuck are we here? We didn't cross the highway, did we? I look to our east, and sure enough, there it is. The weathered asphalt of Route 65. I would have noticed if we crossed pavement. Someone would have. It's the complete opposite direction that we should be heading. Jenna gasps, seemingly realizing this a little after the rest of us. We've been here before. Leo speaks up, clutching the side of his head with a wince. You recognize it too, right? Leo still sounds half asleep, turning to face us. Though it appears he's only speaking to Micah and I. The bat blinks. Oh. Oh, fuck. Um. You dreamed about this too, Chase? I swallow and nod, clutching my clammy paws against my shirt. I think so? The dream from earlier has already begun to fade from my memory, as most dreams do, but the way I felt watching it is still very clear, and this whole scene is starting to give me some serious deja vu, or something like that. There was an albino guy. He had bright red eyes and got ran over. The van's motor continues to idle, humming as it waits. Uh, mine was a little different. Micah doesn't elaborate. No. We've been here before in real life. Implying that this is not real life? Micah glances over at the wolf, and the two exchange a look for a moment. Jenna steps forward and tugs at the driver's side door. Jenna's so brave. <laughs> let's touch. Let's just touch the ghost van. Let, let's just happen? get inside. Lick it. <laughs> it opens with a silent creak, some errant cobwebs fraying apart as the door is pulled fully open. She squints at something by the wheel, then reaches in and taps it. 
keys are in the ignition, and there's this big red glare on the dash. Maybe a check engine light? She frowns to herself. It looks like this thing hasn't been used in a while. Sans whoever turned this on, but I'm no mechanic. She's so formal with her language all the time. <laughs> sans? You use sans in sans a sense? Sans Undertale? Dude, uh, it took me so long to figure out, like, sans was, like, comic sans. <laughs> And obviously papyrus like papyrus, but they're both font names, and that took me a... a I'm like, papyrus really gives it away that well, the other well, one is sans. Yeah, but I just maybe he's just like named after the paper, like the Egyptian paper. Well, speaking as somebody who turned all their papers in, in papyrus until someone stopped me and, started, and they started making us use uh, specific fonts, I was very familiar with papyrus. So I, I was like, like oh, there it is, there, that's, that's, that's a weird pixel art version of papyrus font. <laughs> It seems like it would have taken work to set up. Yeah, you know, I guess I guess I did probably get... You know what, I think I did remember, because they show it. But the Sans thing I totally did not get. And then, and then he's funny, so he's comic Sans. So funny. <laughs> actually delightful. I'm not being sarcastic. That is actually very funny. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was one among us right now. Leo? She pokes her head out, ra raising an inquisitive brow at the wolf. You're welcome to take a look, if you're feeling up to it. She eyes Leo up, examining his physical condition. Her expression is a mixture of skepticism and concern. Leo begins to limp towards the van, and Micah quickly steps up beside him to keep him from tipping over. He grunts appreciatively in response, speaking up. It's probably not a check engine light. What makes you say that? Those didn't really exist back when this was made, before uh, before the mid nineties. I did not know that. No, nope. I would it's like as old as we are. <laughs> are you guys thinking we can drive this out of Echo? I'm a little more concerned with wondering who turned this on in the first place and how we even got here. But that's an optimistic thought, Chase. Yeah, good vibes. Good, good job. So, maybe this is a gift horse that we're looking squarely in the mouth right now. Doubt it. Wow, sounds like somebody who would look at how a horse in the mouth. I I use or a that, zebra. I use that expression <laughs> very frequently. <laughs> I use it today, like in fact, because I just use it all the time. People, half the people I say it to don't know what it means. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, like they're like what the they're like what the fuck you just say? <laughs> and a lot of them are even older than I am. Just falling out of favor. And I'm just like I'm very aware of what it means. I. I think the the actual origins and, and like 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 what it means means are a little harder than what it means no, it, like it's, functionally. It's, but I think it's about like it, it's like the idea like you being gifted a horse and you like you're like checking its teeth. You're evaluating its health, health. Yeah. so it means that you're so people think it's a Trojan horse thing, but it's not because because if you take it that way, the saying makes no sense. But what it really yeah, means is yeah, because you should like, look that gift horse. In yeah, the mouth. exactly. You should look that gift horse. You should give that that gift horse a colonoscopy. Yeah, yeah you should. <laughs> <laughs> like right into the horse's asshole. That's the exact opposite of the incentive of the scenario. <laughs> but I think the idea, so like a, a judgment of a horse's health is by looking at its teeth. So basically, if somebody gave you a gift and you were criticizing it, that's looking a gift horse in the mouth. It's like, oh well, thanks for this thing. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna judge its health right in front of you to see, like, oh, this isn't a really good horse you gave me. Like, you know, it's like if you give somebody a gift and they're like, oh, this isn't really the color I wanted. It's, yeah. I'm on. I'm on on my super sweet sixteen on MTV back when Stephanie was a child and I got like a Lamb I got like a BMW but it was gray instead of the white one I wanted and I'm going to cry about it on TV cuz that yeah. used to be a TV show people would watch for fun I'm trying to think if that is what it means or not I don't I don't know if it's about preference so much as like well, no, questioning it, it, why someone's giving you a gift like their motives No it's a criticism of a gift Is it a criticism of the gift specifically No cuz cuz if somebody gave you a gift a uh, gave you a horse you wouldn't be like being like, oh, why'd you give me a horse? And then look at its teeth. You'd say, I you're looking about, at its teeth to evaluate the health of the horse. So you're determining yeah. if it's a good gift or not. I just think about it when it's used in fiction. And it's often that they, you get a gift from somebody that you don't trust. And then it's like, well, don't look at a gift horse in the mouth. Like there's like, it's like, it's usually accompanied with some sort of like questioning of the intentions of the gift giver. No, I think it's more so just like take, like someone's just been like, oh no, just take the gift. Cause like, why would you question it? It's just a, it's just a good gift. Like, you know. Sound off in the comments two months from now when we don't remember this conversation. 
I mean, hotly debate it because it's important to our near future and we're very invested in the outcome of this debate. Leave 100 comments, please. What's your, <laughs> what is your favorite old white man expression? Because I have a lot of them. My dad is an old white man. <laughs> <laughs> Micah rasps, holding Leo, helping Leo prop himself against the driver's side door as Jenna steps side. The light. Looks like it isn't coming from the dash. It does not. Nope. That's a bright fucking light. You would not want anything like that on your dash. <laughs> You'd be blinded. You'd crash yeah. your car. Leo clumsily grasps the steering wheel, peering closer. It's like it's being reflected off the odometer, but I don't see a direct source. How Leo can clearly see at all after repeated blows to the head may be the real question here. That's fucking weird. A shuffling noise comes from the back of the van, and everyone freezes. There's a raggedly fabric parti there's a raggedy fabric partition hiding everything past the front seats from view. Yeah, that's sketchy. Don't like that. Nope, nope. Gingerly, Leo pulls it aside and squints into a red light illuminating his face. Is anyone back there? Leo doesn't immediately respond, and I can't see him well from where I'm standing. I limp my way up beside Jenna. Leo. She inquires again, more urgent. No, not right now. There is something back there, though. Tarantulas. <laughs> well, that's obvious Jenna, enough. shut up. I'm too big to squeeze between these seats. Gonna go around. Everyone takes a step back out of the... A step back out of the now seemingly coherent wolf's way as he exits the van. Fucking deja vu something fierce right now. This van's where I keep all my red flags. <laughs> That's why it's so bright. Yeah. <laughs> Is That's this full the... of Leos? <laughs> it was. At yeah. some point. <laughs> yeah. It's representative of yeah. Leo's red flags. You too. Then it gives us a both a quizzical look as Leo braces the handle of the rusted van door and gives it a yank. At first it doesn't budge, but after another hard tug, the door flies open, one door partially unhinged as it dangles to the side. There's something standing in the middle of the van, on three spindly legs. The red light projects from something, something on the top. And it begins to flash on and off. It's the tripod of the camera. Oh. Which I, I clocked it as being a camera when it was first described. Y you did. All the way back in Route 65. You did. I'm like, this is a recording. I just, I, I clocked it as being danger, danger. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. A camera woo. on a tripod? At first I think it's mine. But upon closer inspection, it looks like an older model. No fucking way. Micah quickly backs away, nearly tripping over a prickly pear, prickly pear cactus in his haste. I said pear correctly the first time, but it felt like I said it wrong the first time. So I said it again, <laughs> but then the second time I'm like, no, it's still just pear. That's just what that word is. I don't know what Pr I thought I was saying. Prickly pr. Prickly pr. <laughs> prickly a, pr a prickly pierre is a French uh, exchange student. Anyway. Prickly pr. Pierre. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's how I feel about the van, too. <laughs> nope. This isn't real. Everybody pack it up. We're being filmed? What is this? Some elaborate prank show? This is 100% not funny. What is this? A crossover episode? Punked. <laughs> no one remembers punked. Leo says nothing, climbing up into the back of the van and turning the display monitor on the camera around. On it, a little red dot in the corner flashes on and off, in time with illumination of the rest of the cab. The display screen itself shows us standing there at the back of the van, though the image is fuzzy, distorted. I wonder how long this has been here. That's my camera! Micah shouts in surprise, looking briefly to the rest of us before lowering his, his voice some. Or... Well, the high school's camera, but they were shit at keeping inventory. Get owned. I ditched it after my folks kicked me out. Okay, but what's it doing here? And why is it recording? Judging by the looks on everyone's faces, I don't think anyone has an answer to that. 
Mm, okay, you might be right about how he got kicked out. Because if he was recording that, then his folks found it. Yeah. That that's. I I thought he was. I didn't. I mean, I wasn't exactly right because I didn't think he was the recorder. Or I thought he was the recordee. But I mean, he, he would still be the recordee and the recorder, I guess, if you have a tripod. <laughs> you just gotta set it up. From the get we were just concerned because we were like, is this like, are they filming underage stuff for profit? Like, what the fuck? Like, we were immediately alarmed because we, as far as we knew, everyone in that in Route sixty five was like. 16. Well, so we're like immediately it's alarming that there's a camera in the in the van that they're clearly hooking up in. Well, it's okay. You have the red light. You have the the sketchy van. I I can't imagine this not being for the purpose of making porn. And I would assume that if you're making porn, it's probably for profit. Uh, like the only time people really make porn not for profit is if you're just a weird hobbyist or maybe you are in a committed relationship with someone and you think it'd be fun to have sex on tape and then keep it like like i think like a lot of people Especially since these are all people who live with family at the time of having a physical copy of porn of themselves <laughs> which is just a fucking time that, bomb most people don't i don't think most young well i don't think most young people are like oh i really want to film myself fucking so i can keep it it's probably like I want to film fucking so I can sell it on the internet for money <laughs> or I can get clout or something weird like that. I don't think people just keep that for themselves for fun. Like I said, unless you're just in like a committed relationship or unless you're like, like I said, a hobbyist or kind of a weirdo, <laughs> like, you know, you be like, like Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, <laughs> where he films himself having sex and he rates himself like out of five. On, he rates <laughs> He has a collection of VHS tapes and he rates them depending on how he felt he did. <laughs> He's just very dedicated to self-improvement. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Judging by the looks on everyone's faces, I don't think anyone has an answer to that. Leo brings a heavy paw up to his eyes, rubbing them some before peering at Micah, then the screen, then back again. Micah cants his head some at the wolf, letting out a slow exhale. Either this is one fucked up joke, wolf boy, or I'm beginning to think this is hum's doing. The hum... The hum, that's, the, that's the hum that, like, you know, sits, sits over Echo people talk about, right? Haven't yeah, been, we talked been... about the hum being some kind of force and Echo. Yeah, you know, so either it's, either it's like a, it's a prank, or it's like... Or it's the hum. It's some weird voodoo magic. The hum. He mentioned that before, by the motel. Wow, haven't heard that word in a while. What's the hum? It's, a. Uh, it's hard to describe. Bad dreams, like we talked about before. Feels kind of like vision quest shit. Real spiritual stuff that Keith talked about a lot. Wasn't good vibes, though. Bad energy only. Thing is, it only really happens when you're sleeping, and I'm wide-ass awake. He extends his arms out to his sides for a moment before gripping the van's door, thumbing at the chipped paint. I haven't thought about that in a while. Jeremy and Adam talked about it when I was younger, after I mentioned seeing... The thing we just saw half an hour ago, she wants to say, but she still visibly can't quite accept that. Not yet. You know what? I don't. <laughs> but as I was saying... <laughs> Micah, you should know! <laughs> well, he doesn't have the context of her repeatedly not wanting to talk about the imaginary friend that she talked about with Chase once. Yeah, but, but I mean... I but she, like, obviously summoned him from the closet. Like, I don't know. I, I feel yeah, like Yeah, but that... she doesn't have... He doesn't necessarily know that, that she's referring to that, like, sequence. I know. And that, like, a, that thing. But he should put it together. Come on, Micah. You can kind of tell when it's happening, because it's more than just a nightmare. Your ears start buzzing. L like, um, one of them orchestra bands tuning up violins in your skull, you know? Ugh. I can picture that perfectly. It's also kind of in the background of the scene right now. <laughs> That one audio trick where they can play a specific series of notes overlapping in harmony that makes it always sound like it's rising forever. Oh, I hate mm. that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Stop it with your trick trickery orchestra your people. Your trickeries. A creeping sensation that I know exact. A creeping sensation that I know exactly what he's talking about builds my gut. You hear it too? What? Like right now? Leo stares for a moment before nodding. One of the bat's large ears flicks, and he turns his head from side to side. I... don't think so. He pauses. Maybe. 
Might be the engine. He shifts attention back to the vehicle, yanking on the van's door some. Spooky ass ghost van engine. The metal frame of the van seems to rattle in response, though that might just be my imagination. Sometimes I go out into the hills and just camp out away from home, because the hum wasn't as bad there. Heather did it a bunch with me too, though uh, she had her other reasons. Jenna nods, exhaling slowly before crossing her arms over her chest. So, I suppose then you have a theory about all this. One based in, what, M Meseta spiritualism? Honestly, I thought it was like radon poisoning or something. But you get the hum in a few other places around town too. I've slept all over. The rail yard, the lake, this van, they're all real uh, hummy places. You've slept in this in this van before? Despite everything that's happened, the idea that anyone would want to take a nap in this creepy thing is dubious at best for Jenna. Well... Micah trails off. For one usually so coarse and brazen, he, his seeming awkwardness right now feels out of place for him. We both have. <laughs> Briefly. <laughs> Leo places the flat of his palm on the bed of the, of the cab. Flattened cardboard boxes and ratty bits of fabric that must have once been blankets or towels cover the surface. The large canine's brow furrows some, and finally he looks back up at all of us. It may just be me, but he doesn't seem as sluggish anymore. Jenna lets out an exhausted, amused noise, letting her arms flop down to her sides. <laughs> Truly, I'm not sure I see the appeal. Leo and Micah look at each other. There's a silence. Wait. Hold on. You're not saying... I was so stupid. We were both stupid. Micah squeezes the bridge of his nose, closing his eyes as if cringing at himself. I was such a skeevy little bitch back then. I don't know why I pushed. No, I, I didn't mean for that, Micah. I meant for what happened after. You had it rough and I didn't care, or if I did, I didn't wanna because of what happened at the party. I felt like an outsider looking in on in some intimate conversation I don't understand. Which is a feeling I can't say I've felt when I'm around Leo. He always goes out of his way to include me in everything. Mmm. Mmm. He's not feeling this. he's feeling guilt because he might have he's, he might have cared about Micah at some point, but selfishly moved on when he like had an actual boyfriend out of yeah. chase and just completely turned his uh, blind eye to how bad things went. What party? What are you guys talking about? <laughs> you know what party? Chase, they... Remember your last head wound? <laughs> <laughs> 2008. That Dia de los Muertos party at the Parsons Warehouse. The one where you told me you were gay. The night we got together. I blink. My parents had caught me watching gay porn that morning on the computer. And I was afraid to come home to them, so I went to some party at Parsons. The night itself was kind of a blur. I remember getting in a very brief fight with a guy who dumped beer on TJ, and then waking up with Leo over me, eyes full of concern. Somehow, I ended up confiding everything to him about, about being into guys. He apparently had a hunch about it, and next thing I knew, he was ushering me out of the old warehouse to walk home with him. We kissed in the rail yard by his house, and that was about the start of our relationship proper. Still, something always seemed a bit off about that party and the way Leo was acting. I think I remember some dude trying to come up to talk to him and Leo telling him off before insisting that I not ask about it. He seemed really serious at the time. Didn't want to ruin a good thing. Or something like that. I didn't get a good look at the guy he talked to, but he was carrying a camera? The wolf taps the side of the tripod with his fingertips. Leo, you're reprehensible. Jenna's voice is cold and curt. Jenna? What? Shut up. 
Jenna looks taken aback, but only for a split second before shaking her head in disbelief. Leo winces, clutching his wounded head, his reddish eyes flick up to meet mine. I shouldn't have agreed to it. I was just... Jenna quickly interjects, stepping in front of me. No, Leo. This whole week has just proven to me, time and time again, that you are just... Jenna needs to stop talking. She, she does. She does, she does. I wouldn't... I wouldn't do that. Jenna stares, letting out a hot puff of air between her lips before spreading her arms wide. Just perfect for Echo. You truly, truly belong here. You know that? God, how old were you then? How old was Micah? Did you even care? Fucking hell, are you about done? The bat pivots on his heel, away from the van to face Jenna. His eyebrows narrowed beneath, beneath his bangs. I'm not even entirely sure what Jenna's shaming right now. I think Jenna's assuming that Leo took advantage of a young kid. I think Cause, cause she, she, uh, she, she, doesn't, like, she doesn't like Leo, and she's, she thinks yeah, the worst of I'm him. I'm like, weren't they both in high school? Yeah, but but, like, but isn't Micah like... Micah's like younger than us by a lot. Can't be that much, because they're both in high school. Yeah, but... but uh, what are their ages? They try, they try make it seem like the... he's a kid. So he's, he's, he's the same age as, like, Jenna's younger brother. I feel like probably like a two or three year difference, maybe. I guess it'd probably be t t two year difference, because I, I, we weren't seniors, I don't think. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I. But I mean, there were just kids around town. I mean, were we both in high school at the same time? Did they ever say that explicitly? It's, I... been, a, it's been a long. It's been a while since their introduction. I think they just. I think they're, they're all just kids about around about, town. About uh, Micah. I don't even currently remember the time window between Route 65 and like how long Chase said he had until he could get away to to college. Was it like two years? I mean, I, I, I don't like, know I feel like if... there was a decent amount of time left before college was going to start. But I don't like, know if they were both in high school at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. Because I think they're all just kids that live in this shitty town, and they all know each other, regardless of age. So I think it's just kind of one of those things where you'd, you'd be at the same party as someone who was, like... Like mm -hmm. a 21-year-old and a 16-year-old might be at the same party, hypothetically. Yeah, but none of them were that old. Oh, well, I know, but I'm just the, saying, like... The characters it, it, involved, I mean. It's that kind of town, I think. Because, like, how old is fucking Keith? Like, Keith's older than us and Keith was hanging out with, with Micah and Keith was probably like yeah cause he cause they had a they had an alcoholic license presumably yeah so Micah or so Keith had to be, at least be 21 at least probably honestly probably older cause, yeah cause, cause Keith's mixed in with a group with uh with Clint and Duke and everyone yeah but he's hanging around with a bunch of kids I don't think I don't think that there's a I don't think there's a boundary between age groups so Micah could be considerably younger than us. Hmm. That makes him getting kicked out more fucked up. <laughs> like, the younger he gets. Yeah, because I keep referring to... When he first showed up, we kind of kept referring to him as, like, a kid and stuff. Like, like people were calling him a kid. Yeah, and, like, it's just that age, the age group that makes that the case is also much smaller of an age difference back then, though. I mean, I call people kids all the time, and I call people kids who are, like, my age, because I, I base it on maturity level. Well, yeah, they, well, it's also, like, TJ is thought of as, like, a kid, and I, I swear TJ is, like, one year younger than them. No, I thought we looked <laughs> like, it up. Isn't TJ, like... I thought TJ was more than that. We need, we need a fact sheet. This is, uh, this is rough. The problem is that we need to keep our own fact sheet, because anything that the audience would provide would be full of spoilers and stuff. That yeah, we I, was, I, was, I was right about to be like, I can look it up, and then I was like, no, yeah, I can't, I can't, it's, it's I can't, so I can't. <laughs> It'll ruin everything. I can I can message Toaster, and he can let me know if we should know. Dear Toaster, Leo, Stephanie, Micah, and I are playing age a game. Difference? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Help us, please. It's like it's like when you play um Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and then you like your your one phone call to a, to a friend. Yeah. Call a friend. So we'll see if he gets back to us, like, two episodes from now or something, for all I know. Or right now, who knows. Uh, the bat pivots on his heel away from the van to face Jenna, his eyebrows narrowed beneath his bangs. Look, you don't know me. I ain't some fucking victim. Shit was my choice. What? What was your choice? Chase, come on. <laughs> you see? <laughs> <laughs> 
Chase, you're an absolute idiot sometimes. Jenna sounds very disgusted. I frown at her, wondering what the fuck I did wrong. And I abandoned you. Jenna visibly seethes. None of this. She points to the rusty van, that same red light flashing on and off. Makes any sense. But all your actions completely do. You are just all so perfect for this town, thinking any of that was okay. She throws up her hands, legs shaking with frustration. Is she... including me in this? It isn't... I'm gone. Done. Jenna! She turns to leave, through a crackling from the front of the... Though a crackling from the front of the van brings... Or to a halt. Ooh. That was an I don't know, audio or thing. The audio sting. It's the uh, the radio. Hey. From the console, the distorted voice I've become all too familiar with rings forth again. It's coming from the old radio. The audio crackling through dusty speakers. The co oh, the color's changing too. Jenna recognizes it instantly and begins stepping back away from the van again. We should go. Now. Her voice is shaky. The air itself seems fuzzy, electric. Like, I'm breathing in hundreds of tiny strands of vibrating twine. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> that sounded like Chase. I? Leo's the only one to outright respond back, and Micah looks at him with a bewildered expression. Don't talk to the hum. It's Chase. Chase is right there, dipshit. He gestures to me, still standing gobstopped at the back of the van. Leo slowly turns back to me, squinting at my chin, <laughs> then my eyes. <laughs> like, like the goatee's the it's one. It's always the goatee. <laughs> the one difference. It's me. Let's go home. He sees that it isn't my mouth moving, and his eyes widen a little more. A small line of blood runs down from a spot just behind his ear, down to his jaw. I promise I won't bring it up again. Let's go home. Who gives a fuck about what the others say? You know I'm right. I remember saying those exact words after Flynn blasted us for skipping Jenna's birthday party in 10th grade. I'd convinced Leo to hang out with me instead. I was... Addicted to private time with him. Oh, that's mean. I promise I won't bring it up again. We're all silent, staring at the dark cab where the noise is coming from. Except for Leo. He's looking directly at me. Leave. Why? He asks me. I... I'm not sure what to say. It's not me speaking, but those are my words. Everything feels hazy. Hazy and wet. Micah leans his head into the van, trying to get the wolf's attention. Leo, Keith always said not to talk to the hum. That's what this shit is, no doubt. The hysteria. It has a voice? Apparently it's your fucking voice, Chase. No wonder everyone's so damn riled up about you coming back. But... Why me? Do I look like some kind of Maceta Wiseman? Micah grunts, fidgeting from foot to foot. Despite his demeanor, he's definitely visibly unnerved by all this. I'm parroting shit I heard from a guy who's probably dead. For a while when I was younger, I thought I heard Keith's voice too, telling me the shit I wanted to hear, but that shit wasn't good for me. So I got the fuck out of town. Jenna throws her hands up, squeezing the pendant on her necklace. I can't handle this. I'm gonna do what the spooky van wants and leave. It's not the van. A voice in my head speaks, softly, like a whisper from right behind my ear. It's a masculine voice, but not my own. An older man, with kind of an old western accent. Familiar. Glancing back, there's no one there. 
And then Stephanie glanced back just to check on our dog. I did, I did. I thought I, I did it, and then <laughs> I was you, like, I was controlled by the game. Yeah, you are the dog that, that the tail wags. <laughs> I'm the dog that drools. <laughs> Within thinking, I, sp I speak. Without thinking, I speak. It's not the van. And how do you know that? I... I don't know. I admit. There's a long silence, and Leo's t tail curls inward. He's biting the inside of his cheek, thinking hard. Finally, he looks me in the eyes again. It's me. That thing. It follows me. I, I thought it was you, but it's... It's not you. You're different now. He gesticulates in my direction. Leo, I love... Please, be quiet for a sec, eh? Leo interrupts the otherworldly voice like he's shushing a small child. Now he's looking at me, but his gaze seems to shift toward the horizon. A thousand yard stare. Chase, you all left, and it was never the same. So I tried to cope. I remember all the stuff you used to say to me, even the naggy shit, all your banter. Hell, I... I imagine every day at work that you're there with me, talking to me while I'm fixing cars. I pretend I'm teaching you about the basics, like changing oil or replacing headlights. I know it's not riveting stuff, except for when I'm actually riveting, but in my <laughs> head, you love me. And I love you. You don't rivet cars. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. It, sh it shows how uh, how how automobile I'm, I'm, savvy I'm, I'm we are. I'm extremely handy. Yeah, sure you are. Dialing the number of the on my card. <laughs> there's there's just some distance. That's all. Then I drive home, listening to whatever it is on the radio, and I imagine you reacting to it. I imagine you... She imagines Chase giving him Roadhead, and then he jacks it into his napkins for TJ to find. I mean, that's reacting to, reacting to what's on the radio. Sometimes it just really makes them want to give Roadhead. What you didn't get was that the, the, the jizz napkins were actually Chekhov's gun, and it was foreshadowing. <laughs> it was a literary device. <laughs> I mean, I thought it would just prove that Leo was, like, desperate and horny. I mean, it was it was character development in the moment, but now it's like, oh wait, this is not that was not a one off. That was setting up the climax of the <laughs> setting up the climax of his climax. Dude, he's like driving. He's like pull over. Like that's how bad this is. Like he's like driving, and the song comes on. He's like, I wonder what Chase, how Chase would react. I to mean, this. pulling over is just responsible. But yeah, if you gotta jack <laughs> off, then yeah, don't jack off while driving. It's PSA to everybody out there. And I imagine you reacting to it. Groaning every time the word truck is mentioned in a country song, or <laughs> making some snide-ass remark about political ads. A little smile curves up along his jowls, though it diminishes as quick as it forms. That little drop of blood running down the fur of his neck finally splatters on the cab floor beneath, behind, uh, beneath him. When I get home, I go online and, like, there's this pulling in my chest. Like a dread, you know? I click on the social media shit and it's you. The real you. And you're different. You're wearing new shirts, hanging with new friends, drinking fancy college beers, growing terrible facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> I touch my goatee briefly. Micah gives me a sidelong glance. And it feels like I'm losing you all over again. So I just... Avoid it. I I pretend. I pretend that we still drink together on the patio and as the sun goes down on Saturdays. I pretend that you're there beside me at home, watching me play my games. And I pretend at night that pillow I've got my arms wrapped around is you. Making your little irk noises you do when I ruffle your head for or squeeze you. Leo plants his rump against the side of the cabin sliding down to a sitting position as he clutches his head. And then, one day, you started talking back. At first it was quiet, in the back of my head, not really noticeable, and over time it just got more real, yeah? Soon I was looking in mirrors and 
seeing you standing there, a reflection in a widow, in a window or a pool of water. Sometimes I swear you could even touch me. But it wasn't you. Not the real you. It was the you I wanted you to be. This perfect, subservient thing. But it didn't make me happier. It was just a dream. A dream that kept blurring between, like, what was real and what wasn't. And so I wanted to see you. The real you. To, I don't know, get a grip? Fix me? But it just made things worse when you didn't give a shit. When I would smile, and you would look away, and you'd take every chance to hang with others instead of me, like all of the other routes. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> his eyes flick briefly towards Jenna before trailing back down to the space between his feet, the wolf breathing slowly. These past few days, it's been unlike anything I've ever felt before. I'd forget what was real and what wasn't, and, and it'd drive me up the walls, you know? So, sorry. I just... He rubs his face. Fuck. Hmm. The wolf goes still, the gravity of his words rendering everyone silent. Even the radio. Jenna, who seems to be constantly wavering between lingering and noping the fuck out of here, glances back over her shoulder. Her grievances with Leo and Micah are apparently lessened in the face of continued paranormal onslaught. So, this thing that we're seeing, as manifested by the hum, is some sort of tulpa? A uh, tulpa? The name sounds familiar, like something Carl mentioned to me in passing. In layman, a more advanced version of an imaginary friend. Of course, like... Jenna, Jenna's dialogue has a colon in it. I feel like o o only her dialogue would have a colon in it. <laughs> semicolons don't actually do anything that attract you. I like semicolons. I actually use them. I'm like one of the people I know that uses them no. genuinely when writing. No, semicolons aren't real. You can't trick me. No, they're really useful. <laughs> if, you have, if you have two sentences that are like that are like basically could be one sentence, but you don't want to actually separate it out into two sentences, but they're connected in terms of theme, you just put like a semicolon in the middle. <laughs> Forever. For, Read yeah. a whole book that way. Never, never, never stop with a sentence. Oh my gosh, that'd be a, kind of a fun experiment. <laughs> e each sentence has to be somewhat related to the previous one, and you just connect them uh, all with semicolons. Uh, just call the book the gradient. The Fennec frowns deeply, thinking. The process of induction, visualization, thought form, and other mental forcing can stimulate these sorts of psychosomatic happenings. Generally, you see it with people who say they talk to Jesus, or other religious icons that encourage prayer and meditation upon idols. You're saying I'm like some kind of worshipped idol? Chase, wrong takeaway. <laughs> Leo sighs as Leo slinks down a little. Sure. That still doesn't explain why we can't see and hear this thing. Why we can. Yeah, why we can't see and hear this thing. Honestly, it's more likely we're enduring some sort of collective traumatic hallucination. But right now, I'm just spitballing here to rationalize this. She swirls her paw in the direction of the van. A person that others can see and interact with, born from a dream? We watch the radio, though it doesn't chime in. I think it's gone. Another silence. Finally, Micah sw speaks up. Jesus fuck, Leo. Can't you just print out Chase's yearbook picture and tape it to a flashlight like a normal person? <laughs> <laughs> Chula. <laughs> Chula. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. I just thought about like... I'm sure. I, I don't know this person. But I'm sure that there's a person out there that has, like, names for their fleshlights <laughs> that they name personally. Oh, okay. not Not like Bad Dragon, where I was you, gonna can, say, you can that, buy that's ones where that my are thought custom. Went, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm no, no, like, no. They're, they're like most so, okay. sex toy brands had named the toys, so well, that's usually the names. Okay, well, I mean, they, they usually name them something like, you know, like, something that's not a person's name, unless it's those ones that are modeled after, like, 
porn stars or bad dragon which is like they have specific textures yeah. for different characters and i think that's actually really cute but a lot of fleshlights are just gonna be basic just like fleshlight brand fleshlight with no name or description and imagine a person that has several that they actually name different names <laughs> this one's tanya this one's uh you know Gigi. this one's uh like dominique or something this one's this one's gerald <laughs> like, you know. i just had the just the dumbest thought ever which is like a serial killer that molds the dicks of everyone that before they kill them and keeps them as like a collection of dildos Aww. and then and then kills the person and they, they mount them on the wall like trophies like when you kill, kill an animal but they have <laughs> like, like a wall it's like full that of scene dicks. from fleabag I, you know what as soon as i said that i was like but, oh one of these is your father's can you, can you know which one and she's like this one yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to continue that conversation anymore. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, it's a great show. That, no, that I mean, is... they didn't want to, I remember correctly. It was like, this is really awkward that she knew the answer, and they're like, oh. Yeah. But the the stepmom the step a... trying to irk her daughter because she made an art, art project that had a bunch of dicks, and she's like, by the way, one of these is modeled after your dad, and she's trying to creep her out, but the the girl's like uh, oh it's that one <laughs> she like walks off all like uh, if gross she knows what her dad's dick Flea looks Bag like is such a good show i mean it's just kind of inevitable if you live with people for a long time you might accidentally see your parents naked unfortunately for us all womp womp there is hope for us yet <laughs> I read that one because I remember I read that. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, it's a very memorable that, line. That's a good line. Leo looks to Micah, his tired, wounded face slipping into a grin before he starts to chuckle. It's the first bit of proper laughter I've heard from him in days, even if it is bittersweet. Micah, I'm sorry. Dude, for real, it's fine. Micah watches Leo with some wariness in his golden eyes crossing his tattooed arms over his chest. Nah. Mm, what do you mean, nah? Nah. We may have just been messing around, but you had shit rough at home. Everyone knew it. And I just didn't want to think about it, yeah? You just disappeared one day, and that was that. But you were small, didn't have anyone to turn to, and I should have been there for you. Micah scuffs his foot against the dirt, looking a mixture of frazzled and embarrassed at the conversation taking place. We didn't have that kind of relationship. Not like you and Chase had. So that's what I said earlier, where I was like, if, if, if he was having bad times at Chase. home... Chase! And he... <laughs> and he can't tell Leo, then they don't have... They don't have a real relationship. But still. But still. Leo should have... I don't know. Should have <laughs> paid more attention. How about that? Also, we Chase... Like... <laughs> Catch up. Yeah, catch up. Relationship? Relationship? The bat looks at me, quickly clarifying. It wasn't really a relationship or nothing. It was a bad word to use. Just two kids who both knew they liked dudes and experimenting. There's a twisting sensation in my chest as I look at both of them, then imagining them in the van. Right before what was essentially the most romantic night of my life. The day I felt most loved and special out of any. See, that part's fucked. That part is <laughs> fucked. That's a, it's a, Knowing that the timing is rough. Yeah. With a $700 camera and a three-year age difference. Well, that is our answer. Thanks, Jetta. <laughs> yeah, so three-year age difference. So, yeah, 16 and 13. Think about the difference between a 16-year-old and 13-year-old. Think about the difference between a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. Hmm. An 18-year-old and a 15-year-old? That is pretty fucked up, Leo. Like, I'm just saying. It's, it's, it is weird how... And, and it's that, weird trying to think back to when age differences matter. Age differences matter <laughs> like back when, before you're 20. Back when a few years actually changed things ever. When I think of kids that I know... It's like, okay, like, I mean, maybe I have more context because I have a younger brother and sister, and yeah. I grew up watching them grow up. But, like, there was a fucking huge difference between a 13-year-old and a 17-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, developmentally, a 13-year-old's like a little baby. Like, you're like, oh, cute. You hit a certain a certain stride, and you're, you grow up real fast, right? Like, 17, 18, 19 kind of look the same. But they look very different from a 13, 14, 15-year-old. Why the f 
why the fuck did they film it? That's creepy. Like, I'm uh, going to be honest with you. Like, if, if you're an adult and you're like a 24 year old is dating a honestly, even like a 35 year old, it's, it's a not looming... a huge difference in terms of like appearance. Like, you, you can, that doesn't really seem like a big difference. But like I said, a 17 year old and a fucking 14 year old sounds pretty gross to me. This has been a looming threat this entire time. Even before we knew anything else about Leo, there was just the fact that we knew that he seemed to be having sex in a van with a camera while he was underage. And I'm like, what is the camera for, Leo? I think at the time I was assuming that the partner was over 18, probably, and Leo was the underage person I up thought, to some shit. Yeah, honestly, I thought that, that somebody else was um, enticing him to make porn with another underage kid. I thought there was yeah. two teenagers who were fucking and an adult was filming Cause, them Because the whole scene, for the, money. Whole, the whole thing took place in a skeevy place where the party was, and so it felt like the whole thing was happening for profit reasons, just like how, like, five feet away, people were likely, like, dealing drugs and so on, as we know is constantly happening in this setting. And it just it was, like, the same, like, overall, like, tone. So we're just, like, immediately, like, what the fuck, Leo? What were you up to? Are we ever going to interrogate this because there was a genuine question of whether this would ever come up or if anyone knew about it and it would ever be mentioned again like i said i I do i do want to know why they were filming it because i do think i almost wonder if if uh if micah was like selling these slinging these online for profit to buy his drugs for his drug trade or some weird thing like that you know don't return. Don't fuck up and turn that camera back into the school with the tape still in (laughs) that'd be i mean (laughs) Uh, yeah, I was gonna say kind of funny, but no, it's not funny. <laughs> Micah ignores Jenna. Judging by your expression, I'm guessing he never told you. I don't blame him. Leo scoots himself to the back of the van, hanging his legs off the end as he looks at me. And I should have. I just didn't want to lose you, you know? He's looking at me now. And yet, he lost you anyway. Oh. That's all I can manage to say. Leo turns his attention back to Micah. I'm no replacement for Keith, but I should have helped you get back on your feet, introduced you to the group. Dios. You and Chase would have gotten along after a while. Didn't you want to be a journalism major? Jenna, despite the apologetic tone of Leo, definitely doesn't seem eager to stick around for this conversation. (laughs) Man, that was a lifetime ago. We could have taken your feral ass in and shown you how society works. I'll take that feral ass. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, you probably don't even know how to do your taxes. Uh, It's called TurboTax. It's really (laughs) easy. They do it for you. You don't need taxes when you just don't live anywhere <laughs> yeah if you live if you live in a van bat. then you don't pay taxes yeah problem solved that's the law <laughs> micah clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth kind of like leo does fuck taxes government ain't getting shit anyway <laughs> well <laughs> good luck when the irs comes for you he clears his still raspy throat wincing as he swallows if you want to get ahead in life you can't rely on others gotta get it for yourself He passes a glance toward Jenna for a moment. We did. I chime in, still trying to wrap my head around that revelation from earlier. Micah looks like he's about to snap back with something biting, but he just waves it off with the flop of his hand. Anyway, if you wanted forgiveness, you got it. Let's just put some distance between us and this hum hotspot, okay? Please. Micah grunts once beginning to walk off behind Jenna. After a moment, he slows some, looking back at Leo. Glad you, uh, finally woke up, though. Well, Leo's back. Uh, I have no sense of whether, uh, it's about to end, or if it's about to get worse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like, where I, this I don't, is- I have no sense of where we are in the story, besides the day of the week. I thought, I I really, thought worse shit was going to happen with that van. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 well, yeah. The, I mean, even, I'm glad they Even when they describe the three-legged thing for just a moment, you're like, what the fuck's in the van? I, know, I thought it was a monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we actually had uh, 
sort of a Leo come up come up at scene finally. A Leo closure, which didn't really scene. happen in his own story for the most part. Micah, Micah was the conduit for Leo's closure. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 